This video is brought to you by Surfshark VPN. Welcome to Electrified, it's your host, Dylan Loomis. Happy Thursday. So first up today, new item on the Tesla shop, a Cybertruck beanie going for $40 in both gray and silver-ish, if you will. So I did just buy a Tesla hat myself. And I have to say, it's a solid hat. I know people were complaining about the quality of Tesla products. I do have one Tesla t-shirt that is very thin and didn't love it, probably overpriced. You would like to see Tesla have premium high-end clothing and gear, but just wanted to show you, at least for the hats, I'm a satisfied customer. Next up, they have a Model Y glass roof sunshade going for $120. Some people were complaining that the third party versions of this item sag a little bit in the middle. I'm not sure if this one will fix that issue, but it does come with eight sunshade clips. But this one is collapsible and foldable. A few weeks back, we got that report about a contract between New York and Tesla for an order of roughly $12 million. Well, here it is. Looking at the New York Police Department, they are considering buying 250 Model 3s for its service fleet. The agency would pay $51,940 each for the vehicles as part of a citywide push to transition to an all-electric fleet, and the contract is expected to be discussed today, Thursday, this morning. Could be valued, as mentioned, at about $12.4 million dollars. And a fun fact for you, the NYPD is the largest police department in the US with almost 36,000 uniformed officers and a fleet of 9,000 vehicles. We have these two images of what looks to be a new version of the Model S, possibly for the European market, but if not, it might mean some changes for charging here in America, but that might be a long stretch. So let's take a look. Tesla designed a bigger charge port for the Model 3 market because it built the vehicle with this CCS standard in mind for the European market, which by the way is the standard there. But what's happening here is people are using this to speculate that the CCS standard and a new CCS plug could be coming standard in the North American market, which would indicate a shift from Tesla's proprietary charging plug over to the CCS standard that is taking hold over in Europe. Now, over the next few weeks, I plan to do a quick segment kind of clarifying the charging standards and simplifying it all for you so you can understand what's going on. But for now, I wanna throw you the question, how do you think the charging standards should be handled going into the future? Very open-ended, but I'd be very curious to hear your thoughts below. And I forgot to mention it yesterday, but in that Financial Times interview with Elon, Bob Lutz also had some new statements who historically was a critic of Tesla and Elon. Now he is saying that Musk's impact on the auto industry has been unbelievable and nothing short of incredible. He also said, this is why Mercedes-Benz and BMW are so afraid of him. So in just a few years, Tesla turning one of the staunchest Tesla critics into somewhat of a believer. Tesla New York on Twitter shared a clip of Dan Ives. I blocked out the text just so as to not give the video away, but have a look. As you say, Tesla has 2.5 trillion of that $5 trillion wave, half of it. I mean, do you see a future though where Tesla gives up the crown that maybe some of those incumbents like GM and Ford actually surpass that? Yeah, I, mean, I think there's a better chance of me playing in the Masters in April than <laughs> Tesla probably seeding it could happen. The, the, the crown share there. It could, could happen. Um, but no, but, 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 but all generally said, Tesla has just such a lead from a battery perspective, distribution, as well as brand. So we don't view it as a Rivian, a GM, or Ford is going to unseat Tesla. Mm. It's it's you look at this market, it's a five trillion of of market opportunity. I think it's really the big transformation to the auto industry since nineteen fifties. As it all plays out, they'll start to seed some market share, but from a battery and perspective, from a moot, pretty significant what they've built out. Tesla Greater China has launched its YouTube page. I will link to it below. This is their first video, part of what seems to be a Go Giga series, so I will play a brief part of the video for you. Full thing, once again, linked below. Ben控制的第三个创新，则是生产创新。首先是零件上的创新，提高零件自主开发能力，为成本控制打开更多想象空间。比如目前Model Y 如何理解这个零件背后的创新魅力？它以前就拿摩托三来讲，我们大概是要七十多个充焊零件，我们一般在整车上都是去外包的。我们自己还得要去建一条焊装线。实际上整个那个周期啊是很长的。我们做这个一
，就跟我们的工业岛铝锭，通过我们自己的话制造，我们有这个熔炼，有压铸，有后处理，有机加工，在非常短的一个时间内，就有这个原材料，把这个产品呢成型出来。在特斯拉所做的 One Piece Casting， 我们真的在推动着行业的发展。我觉得我特别有成就感，特别能够实现一个工程师的一个梦想。And here's to hoping that Tesla Greater China starts uploading videos with American subtitles in more frequency. And in this new digital connected world, I'm happy to thank the sponsor of today's episode, Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN or a virtual private network that encrypts your online data and secures your personal information. Anywhere you use the internet. To be clear, Surfshark will give you protection at home, but especially if you use public Wi-Fi, coffee shops, or airports, where hackers tend to lurk, Surfshark can give you true security and peace of mind. Surfshark also allows you to bypass censorship no matter where you are. It'll unblock websites and bypass geo restrictions, unlocking new content. The Surfshark user interface is clean and very easy to use, and Surfshark is one of the only VPNs to allow one account on an unlimited number of devices. So, to secure your personal information, head to Surfshark.deals/electrified and use code Electrified to get 83% off and four extra months free. Surfshark also offers a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there is no risk to try it for yourself. Link is in the description below. Thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring this video, and thanks to all of you for the support. Now, you guys know I typically try to keep politics off the channel, keep it a light-hearted, fun, educational atmosphere, but this video does have plenty of hypocrisy in line with what Elon said, so I just wanted to play this quick clip for you. It's pretty astounding. So you can read the tax situation and who's paying what right here, but watch how Lizzie beelines behind one of her colleagues so as to not be on camera getting off of this private plane. This woke politics, virtue signaling, attacking Elon thing has gotten way out of control. But it's clear that it's a way for these people to get power and gain attention. But this group of people has zero interest in facts and the truth. It's 100% driven by narratives and emotion, and it's completely unfounded. So it's really not worth your time or emotion to get worked up about it, as hard as that may be. A subscriber of mine, Tomas, sent me a link to this video clip, which provided some good commentary and clarity on the Giga Berlin water situation. Because there was a lot of misinformation, sadly, from Tesla Rati yesterday. There is no delay yet. I have reported. I have talked to people locally. It is still everything according to plan, even though you won't believe it. And no, the entire factory is not in um, is not gonna fail because of a court uh, uh, thing going on here. This is not the case, please. That was not well researched here. It is wrong reporting. It is possible that the water consumption happening here in Germany might be cancelled, but this is happening for 30 years, so that would be unprecedented if that is actually happening. And even if there are other water supplies that could be tapped in, if that is happening, and it is not influencing the final per permit, so. Please, please, that was wrong. And the week of accolades for Elon continues as Newsweek has this to say from PayPal to Tesla in the final frontier. No challenge seems too big for Elon. While drawing comparisons to Thomas Edison, with even bolder ventures on the way, Musk has earned his place in our Newsweek Disruptors Hall of Fame. If you'd like to read more, I will include that link below. And speaking of that attack Elon thing, there's so many people on Twitter talking about he was rich and carried around rubies and gems in his pockets and stuff. Well, Elon said, I came to the US with no money and graduated with over a hundred thousand in debt despite scholarships and working two jobs while at school and I personally do not take Elon to be a liar now yes he might be overly optimistic with timelines and expectations but flat-out lying about historical things I don't see it 
Elon was asked about a cyberpunk update and he said it's complicated but hopefully out next quarter along with Witcher. A lot of internal debate as to whether we should be putting efforts towards generalized gaming emulation versus making individual games work well. So gaming emulation is basically just a system where it allows you to play older games on newer hardware or cross hardware, you know, say from a PC to a gaming console. And they're talking about either doing that or focusing on making individual games work well. And there is much debate in Tesla and also in the comments section. Let me know which side would you fall on. More games that possibly have less quality or less games that work with higher quality, I would probably lean toward the latter. And I have to say it, Jim Farley is growing on me. I really like the way he has handled himself publicly over the past few weeks. And here is a very quick clip of a recent interview. So, so Jim, I want to talk about your friendly rivalry, at least on Twitter, with Mr. Elon Musk. I saw that you congratulated him. You're very gracious to congratulate him for being named Times Man of the Year, even though you got Motor Trend Man of the Year. Uh, and you said you really set an example for us. Can you catch up and beat Tesla? Well, the first inning of this nine inning game is for us to get to 600,000. We think that'll put us in number two. And then with Tennessee and Kentucky, you know, we really have a chance to, to get to number one. It, it'll depend on the acceptance of those models. You know, that, that's a couple years away. Um, so it really, it really is on us to execute the products for them to be received as our first three have, and then to scale. A lot of uncertainty, but I wouldn't bet against a Ford team. Uh, I, I really admire Tesla and Elon for what they've done. Uh, and, and it's clearly showed that an always-on relationship with the customer is where this, where this industry is going. Not just propulsion going electric, but actually having a digital relationship with the customer. And um, I'm very thankful for that. But, you know, we're competitors. And I race. And second is the first loser. So, you know, we're going we're gonna to go for it. And, um, but we'll see how it goes. It, it'll be a, a couple of years away. Here we have an anecdote that Tesla customers that placed an order for the long range rear wheel drive version of the Model Y that is now a model not going into production. As they changed their orders, they asked if they could have the cheaper FSD pricing included because it was under $5,000 at the time. Well, Tesla has told at least one individual that once they change the configuration, none of the previous pricing will be honored. This definitely is not great. Some of these people have had orders for over two years and now they wait and they're only to be told that they can't get that car, but also they're gonna have to pay the updated $10,000 price for FSD. I'm assuming a lot of you have seen this sign for Tesla Road at Giga Austin, but in all reality, there is no Tesla Road just yet. The Travis County Commissioner's Court is considering a request from Tesla to change the name of Harold Green Road, but that has not happened. The Commissioner's Court voted this week to hold a December December 21st public hearing on potentially changing the road's name and to negotiate with Tesla about additional work on another nearby road. And a public information officer said the raising of the new Tesla road sign was a result of a miscommunication between his agency and Travis County. So hopefully they can get it sorted out on the 21st. A quick note on Rivian who will have its first report as a public company today after market close. The company is expecting capital expenditures of about $8 billion through 2023 three or four billion dollars per year and most analysts aren't expecting Rivian to turn a profit until 2025. I even think that might be optimistic. We have to remember it took Tesla roughly 10 years to consistently turn quarterly profits so bear that in mind. So it's not really the financials people will be looking for but new expectations and guidance for delivery of their models and how is the ramp going. And sticking with Rivian it looks like they might be making a special announcement today. A special news conference Thursday afternoon today where he is expected to formally announce EV maker Rivian will build a $5 billion factory east of Atlanta, this coming from the governor Brian Kemp. And this is expected to go down today at 4 p.m. And this facility is also expected to create about 7,500 manufacturing jobs. Also a quick shout out to my subscriber Peter who shared this article with me and Best in Tesla just did a video covering this topic. But real quick, in case you missed it, basically Volkswagen shipped out over 50,000 ID3s kind of rushed and they promised customers that they were gonna update things with software updates, made customers sign a paper, basically knowing that these cars were going to have issues. As you can see, some of the cars couldn't start, they couldn't be put into gear, the key couldn't be recognized, screens freezing, the whole shebang. But why did Volkswagen do this? Well, presumably to save money on emissions fines. 
The Volkswagen fines would have been huge. We're talking about in the billions if they did not reach certain limits. So I'll link the article below if you'd like to learn more, but it seems as though VW is still bending the rules taking shortcuts, and maybe not as much has changed as we would like to think. Here we have a quick teaser from GMC for its Sierra Denali, and the full reveal is expected in 2022. And lastly today, back to VW, it looks like they might produce less cars in 2022 than they did in 2021, citing chip issues. The automaker is expecting the chip shortage to last until at least early 2023, and deliveries could fall to 8 million cars next year from 9 million roughly this year. VW's labor boss, Daniela Cavallo, said there will still be shortages all next year, and things will not suddenly get better in 2023 either. We still have the worst ahead of us. And Porsche CEO Oliver Bloom said, anyone who believes the chip crisis will calm itself in the next year is mistaken. And I've been saying the same thing, despite what Elon has said, as you just look at the landscape and all of these new automakers who plan to make more EVs, which will require more chips, I don't see the problem going away in the next year. But that's all for today. Don't forget to check out Surfshark, link in the description below for that holiday special. Please take a second to like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.